Hey folks, today I'm going to show you how you can get started developing for your frame. I'm going to show you a little bit about how the Bluetooth communication to the device works and then we'll try some examples. Let's jump in. So we can start here at the docs pages. If you go to docs.brilliant.xyz um, you can read up all about how um, every aspect of the hardware and the firmware works. Um, so to get started with the Bluetooth we can check out this building app section. And if you scroll down to this Bluetooth part, there's some information on how to connect. Um, but let's just jump into how the actual communication part works. Essentially, there's two pipes um, to frame. Uh, frame is essentially uh, a remote computer that can do its own thing, and you essentially communicate to it as, as a serial terminal. Uh, so there's these two characteristics. Uh, one is for receiving data and the others for sending data. Um, what this means is on one of those channels you will send some string. Uh, frame uses Lua, uh, so you send any Lua string and you will receive a response back on the receive characteristic. So it's just a back forth um, and we can dive into how this works a little bit under the hood once we try some examples. Something worth knowing is that unlike regular Lua, which I can show you here, so if I start up Lua in my terminal, whenever I type things, I can see the echo come back. So I can do one plus two and it will return three. Um, frame does not work like that because it doesn't have a REPL, uh, this read, evaluate, print loop. Uh, it can only evaluate an actual Lua statement, essentially. So one plus two will return an error because under the hood, the Lua REPL actually wraps this up into a print statement. So if we want to do the same thing on frame, you would have to actually do print one plus two, and then you will get a response. This goes for everything you send. And the other thing worth noting is that in a regular Lua REPL, um, you can actually do multiple lines, um, but that's handled a little bit differently on frame, again, because there's no, there's no REPL there. Um, and this makes it a lot easier for you to design your apps. Um, if there was a REPL on, on frame, um, then your app would have to deal with these echoes. It will have to understand all these extra symbols that can come through um, that are really there for, for when you're using it interactively. Um, but when you're making an app that automatically communicates the device, it's a lot easier to not have that stuff. So um, we'll see a little bit more um, why that is once we get into the examples. So the easiest way to get started is by installing Frame Utils uh, for Python. Um, Frame Utils is a bunch of useful little uh, tools and libraries um, that can help you develop for Frame. And the Bluetooth part of Frame Utils is an easy way for you to communicate and, and start sending things back and forth to Frame. Um, the same logic can work in any other language. So if you're making a mobile app, um, the same thing will basically go. Um, but the nice thing about Frame Utils is that it actually shows you under the hood what's going back and forth over the Bluetooth. Um, so it's a good place to start. So we can get started by installing Frame Utils. Uh, you install it using pip. Uh, over here I already have installed. And then down here, we have a little example that you can copy and paste into a Python file. So, um, currently I have frame uh, not connected or paired to any device. Um, if you previously had frame paired to your phone, for example, you will need to reset it by holding uh, the little button in the back with a SIM card tool. And just make sure there's no frame device paired with um, your laptop or your desktop computer. Um, so it's a fresh uh, bond that you're doing. If you're moving frame between multiple devices, uh, frame can only be connected to one device at a time. Um, so you will have to reset it every time you move device. Eventually, once you're making an app, you're probably going to stick on, on one platform. Um, so then you don't have to keep doing it if you run multiple times. Um, but that first time you connect, you will just need to make sure um, the bonds are cleared and you do a fresh pairing. So frame is here. I'm going to take the dock off and frame should boot up. It shows frame 
uh, on the display and I will run this example and we'll see what happens. So should get a little pairing pop up. Here it is. Hit connect and there you see it printed hello world and three. All of this ran on frame so these lines that you see the print hello world and the print one plus two those were sent to frame and the frame responded and that printed out into the terminal here. So I can run you through a little bit of how this works um, and what this example is actually doing. All of the finer details of how the Bluetooth to frame works are wrapped up in these, um, these nice functions. Uh, if you want to see how they work under the hood, um, I recommend checking out the GitHub page for this project. If you go into source frame utils, all of the Bluetooth logic is contained in this one bluetooth.py file. This shows you how all of the connection is done, how it's all set up, um, and how uh, the strings are sent back and forth from the device. So you can essentially look at this and use it as a template and essentially copy it into, into your own logic for your own apps. Maybe that's a mobile app, maybe it's a different language altogether, and um, that way you can follow this sort of standard template. So what's happening over here, we're creating this Bluetooth object, this is the frame Bluetooth object, um, we're connecting. These are all async functions, so you need to await them. Um, and then over here, um, we're sending these Lua, these Lua statements um, that are evaluating and returning something back. So here we're doing print hello world, and we have this await print flag set to true. If you didn't have this, um, this function would just skip over. It would, it would ignore the response, essentially. Um, and you may want to do this in some cases. For example, if you want to set a variable, if we do a equals one plus two, for example, um, then you don't want to await, uh, await any print. In fact, you can't because this won't respond with anything. And this is the nice thing about how Lua on frame works is that it will only return stuff that you explicitly want it to return. Um, it won't send back echoes. It won't send back tons of junk that your app has to deal with. Um, so that way your logic can, can just look out for the things that you've explicitly said that you want to print um, and then nothing else is coming back. And it keeps the Bluetooth channel um, nice and quiet for everything else going on. So what this will do is we'll assign um, three to A um, and then it will just continue. Um, this won't really await uh, for anything to come back. So you can build your logic like this. And once we start getting into some of the bigger examples, um, you'll see uh, how this is used in a bit more detail. Something else that can be quite useful is understanding what is actually being sent over the Bluetooth channel. And you can see that by adding another flag, which is show me, if you set that to true, this will print out exactly the string that gets sent to frame. Uh, this can be useful for debugging your apps if it's not quite behaving as you expect. And so here we can see it's sending exactly the bytes, uh, print, hello world, in its entirety. So if you have some kind of variable in here um, that's changing, sending different things, you can use this show me flag and it will, it will output exactly all the bytes that are being sent over the Bluetooth. Uh, can help you debug your apps. Something else that can help with debugging is being able to print um, anything that's coming back from frame that may be coming back asynchronously. So if frame has its own loop going on, if there's a for loop, if there's a while loop, something on a timer, and it's just printing things in its own pace um, that you're not necessarily directly requesting um, using the send Lua function, um, you can add something into, you can add a, a response handler into the connect function. Um, so here I've just put in a Lambda function. So whenever something comes back um, over, over Bluetooth, it will just print out. Um, and in that case, you don't necessarily need to add this away print. Um, so this will just continue. Uh, so if we do that, and now this print response handler will actually um, handle the printing of the output. Something you need to do here, um, because this will run straight away and then it's gonna disconnect. Um, this will be too fast, so we won't get the response. Um, so we need to do a async io.sleep over here and sleep for one second. So let's run this.
Oh, forgot to await the sleep. Rookie mistake. Do it all the time. Let's try it again. There we go. So that's another way you can handle um, responses coming back from frame. Um, any kind of loop that's going on, something on a timer, um, that's how you would catch those, those prints. And again, this is something you can translate into your own logic um, if you're making a mobile app or any kind of other app. So let's take it up a notch and try a little bit more of an involved example. Um, if you check out the frame code base repository in our GitHub, um, there is a tests folder. Um, and this is, this is actually the firmware project for frame. Um, and we have this test folder and we use these tests to actually verify um, all of the Lua and how the Lua API is working. If you want to look at the API in, in, in particular detail, um, check out the Lua API section um, in the docs. And you can go into each of the peripherals and see uh, exactly what the API is, how to use them. Um, there's also a load of examples here. Um, but let's try out something from this test folder. Uh, we can copy paste something and just try it out very quickly. So I'll jump into this IMU uh, raw test. Um, and all this does is um, just print out, stream out the IMU um, data um, and print it to the terminal. So I can paste that over here. Um, and then let me start my frame up and then we can run this uh, example. So here you can see it printing out uh, the raw IMU data. So as I move frame around, uh, the numbers are changing. Uh, this is also looking out for taps. So there's a function here that is attached to the tap callback. So whenever I tap, you see it also prints out tap on, uh, on the terminal. So it can get a bit tedious to send uh, Lua strings like this line by line. Uh, if you have larger apps, larger scripts, uh, it's better to send these as files and save those files on frame um, and actually run those, uh, those scripts as, as a file. Frame has a file system built in. You can write, edit, modify files, um, just as you expect from any file system. You can rename, delete things, um, and there can be any arbitrary file. Um, but specifically, Lua files can be directly executed uh, when they're saved on the device. Um, so if we look at this test camera FPS um, example, uh, this shows us how to upload a file and run the file on frame. Uh, so over here we have a Lua script. Um, here it's just a multi-line um, string uh, in Python, but you can just as well load this from a real Lua file and send those across. So the first thing we do over here is send a break signal. And what the break signal does is um, just like how whenever you're in a terminal and you hit control C and it kills something that's running, um, this break signal does the same thing. Uh, so if you have a file or a script or some kind of loop running on frame, uh, frame won't respond to these send Lua commands. Um, so you need to send a break signal so that it can actually respond and actually absorb these, these commands again. Uh, and the reason for that is um, when a script is running, um, you can actually catch uh, these kinds of inputs and actually attach some logic to it. Um, so that's why otherwise they are, they're just ignored uh, unless you specifically handle those in your script uh, or in your loop. So we start by sending the break signal and then we create this um, frame, uh, so we create this uh, file object um, using frame.file.open. So we create a file called main.lua in write mode uh, this will actually overwrite any existing main uh, dot Lua. Um, and then we're sending line by line um, and we're using F colon write to, light, to, to write these, uh, these lines into the file. Um, an important thing to keep in mind here is that um, whenever we use this send Lua command, uh, just as we're using down here, um, we can only send a certain number of characters at a time over Bluetooth. Um, that is called the MTU size. Um, typically, that's 254 characters. Um, and the reason for that is Bluetooth can only uh, send a certain amount of data per transaction. Um, and if you want to send more than that, you just need to split up uh, according to the MTU size. 
Uh, in these examples, it doesn't matter because each line is typically much less than the MTU limit. Um, but it's if you're if you want to do this more efficiently, um, you can actually split up the whole file into whatever the MTU size is, um, and um, actually send that um, in in blocks rather than lines. Uh, and that's exactly how we do it in our Noah uh, Flutter app. Um, so if you want to see how that's done, uh, go check out the Noah Flutter code base. Um, got some really good um, example there on how to send multiple files very quickly. Um, so once we've sent all the, the data and saved it into the file, um, we close the file. Something else worth noting here is that um, it's important to, to put something after you write to the file, we print nil. Uh, and that is important because um, this in itself doesn't return anything. Um, and so putting nil here, make sure that this definitely got completed um, before we send another line. Um, if this nil wasn't here and we didn't have the await print, um, then you would end up sending these strings too quickly um, and it wouldn't get time to actually save them into the file. Uh, you'd end up with errors. Um, so once that's done, we close the file and then uh, there's two ways to run this main.lua. Um, when frame resets, um, it will first look for a main.lua uh, file. If it exists, it will run that file. Um, otherwise, it shows frame on the screen. Um, another way to do it is by using the require keyword. And you can do require main, and that will run the main file. So in this case, we just send a reset signal, which restarts the Lua state machine. It will find that main file, and it will run that main file. Uh, so let's copy this. So what this example is doing is uh, it's a state machine um, that's uh, capturing um, an image from the camera. Um, it's then sending it over Bluetooth um, and then it's just doing that on a loop. So we use this to test uh, how fast we can actually send um, images back from frame. So I can run this example here. Let me start my frame. Let me try again. You can see uploading the file, and now it's receiving data. So if I go onto my desktop, you can see an image here that's being received as I uh, move the frame around. So you may be wondering how we actually get the image data back from frame. Um, we could be sending this as strings. Um, so we could actually send uh, Lua strings and wrap the data into a string using a slash x and the, some hex value, but that would be very inefficient. Um, so there is actually another mode um, that the receive and transmit characteristic can work in, and that is the data mode. So in regular mode, you just send strings back and forth, um, and these are ASCII strings. Um, they can be UTFA strings as well. Um, but if you wanted to send data, um, you simply append a flag at the start of the payload, and then it will be considered as uh, raw, raw bytes rather than a string. Uh, frame, if you send um, this flag followed by bytes to frame, it won't be uh, acknowledged by, um, by the string interpreter. Um, it will be sent directly to a particular callback that will handle that data. And it's the same in the other direction. Um, so when we send um, Bluetooth data, uh, raw data from frame, it arrives with this flag at the start. And that's how we know that we just received bytes and uh, is the most efficient way of transferring data back and forth to frame. So that flag is simply a 0-1 uh, hex character um, at the start of the payload. And whenever that's in there, um, for each direction, that's considered to be raw data um, and not a string. So we can actually see that in action if we go into um, the script we just tried. Um, when we read out data from the camera buffer, um, we are reading um, this frame. Uh, we're reading the data and we're reading the amount of data as a max length. Um, I'm doing a minus one here because I'm attaching uh, another flag to the start, um, which just tells us when the image has fully been received. Um, but this is this is not the same as this zero one flag. This is just my my own logic basically. Um, but then we're doing Bluetooth send, um, and I'm sending the the data 
such as here in this I variable. Um, and so what frame is then receiving, uh, so what the um, um, script here, this Python script is receiving, um, is raw data. So just before how we had this print response handler, we can actually create a data response handler. And we've attached it to, to this receive data function. And in receive data, we receive some payload, some bytes. And um, all I'm doing here is appending um, that data to my image buffer. Um, and once I've received all, received all of the image, um, I'm just using this extra flag at the start um, that I mentioned before. Um, I save that as a JPEG, um, and then I clear the buffer and wait for the next data to arrive. So that is another way you can actually send um, uh, data back and forth. You would typically do this for sending images to frame, um, sending some kind of graphics, um, receiving camera data back from frame, receiving microphone um, audio back from frame. Um, you would use this uh, uh, data mode rather than the, the Lua string mode uh, to send data back and forth. And if you want to look a little bit in detail how this works under the hood, um, definitely check out this sending data section of the docs. So that's a little crash course on uh, how you can get started writing uh, writing your apps for, for Frame. Um, for more details, be sure to check out the docs. Um, there's a lot of uh, information about how all the APIs work. Um, there's a lot of examples down here. Um, and check out the examples in the Frame code base tests folder as well. Um, this is always evolving, so keep an eye on it. Um, and make sure you have the latest firmware uh, running on frame. The best way to do that is by using the NOAA app. Uh, the NOAA app will update you to the latest firmware. And uh, hope you have fun making your frame apps. Good luck and hope to see you on our Discord if you have any questions. Take care, catch you around.